these creation convention conventions that we do. For the first time since I've been doing them, we have Jensen and Jared here on a Saturday. You, England, you are getting a two-day Jensen and Jared experience. I'm excited as all hell. But also, Nisha Collins is here. Because of some 
glitch in the system that has the steering wheel over there, freaking everybody out. But you're driving innocently around with your closely cropped quad. And all of a sudden, at a stoplight, you say to yourself, I say, what's that giant? Boom! You're overcome! And next thing you do, you flip up and look in the rearview mirror, and my God, you've got hair everywhere! <laughs> my hair is so long and perfect. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do if you're that man? I tell you what you do. You do the stupidest thing you can do. And I didn't matter how many times I'll tell you not to do this, you will do this. You will go home, your wife will see you, and for the first time in years, find you attractive. <laughs> and you will go upstairs to your boudoir. <laughs> to the bathroom you share with your bride, and you will find your hairbrushes and you will go. Why did you do that, Rich? You have all this hair. You may not know this, but Jared Padalecki doesn't believe in hairbrushes. He believes they are pedestrian tools of the devil, sent to destroy otherwise perfectly flowing hair. Because he was blessed with self-combing hair. He's gotten mad at me for packing a hairbrush. Does that make him weird? Does that make him wrong? Fuck yes. But it's also gonna cripple the hairbrush industry. Because people don't like it. No, I get out of here too. Finally, people make it sense. They get it. You don't want to be hit with this little bit of Hold on to your hairbrushes, people. Because when your husband comes home after you've been kind of lucky, he's going to toss those things to the four winds. And then what are you going to do? You're going to have bow legged no hairbrush society <laughs> permeating every facet of burning of life. I am not okay with what we're doing to your town. And yet, my hands are tied. Not literally, but emotionally. They're emotionally tied. But they could be tied, literally. Well, for the right price. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can you probably get a tie up? You know what I'm saying? Pass the time. I'm on the road for a couple weeks. Mike's doing a fundraiser trying to get money together. To tie up, to tie up my hands? Yeah. Well, they sewed my lips shut. That didn't work. That's true. Might as well try tying up the hands. <laughs> See what that gets you. How many of you are experiencing your very first ever supernatural convention? Anybody here? Right now? Here's another question I like to ask. We didn't really get into it, Robbie, yesterday because we didn't want to play favorites, and I think that's smart. We're, you know, we're we're good guys. We embrace all people. Come around. We have. Around. Um, but I would like to know, just for this, just for my own personal edification, how many of you find fine folks are? My internationally sanctified, anointed, hand selected, riotous kids in the class, Friday people. How many Friday people got here? That was a hell of a showing yesterday, Robbo. A hell of a showing. Very impressed. You know, Very impressed. you know what's funny? I figure, uh, Robbie and I have been doing this show. We started doing Convention for Supernatural in 1974. Yep. And uh, Robbie had just finished college. That's right. And, Clown college. Um, and we've noticed something. And I, I, I'm noticing it right now. I, I don't think you know where I'm going with this because I'm telling you, we've learned something. You know, we try to we try to be open. The band tries to pay attention. We try to, well, Norton's not drinking his coffee in the middle of my bed. I think we're, we're, on, we're on point. By the way, you're, I see codename Hillary on your coffee. Um, we try to pay attention to what goes on so we can learn and then ignore. <laughs> and one of the things I'm noticing right now, Robbie, we, we do these uh, Saturday morning openings, and for the most part, people have shown up the night before to a little wing ding Matthew Cohen and I throw called the karaoke party. <laughs> so yesterday was no exception, very well attended event. Um, very fun. A lot of times people have I don't know what you call it here in the uh, in the states. We call it booze. A lot of people drink the booze. Right, right. Um, talking about alcohol. Yeah, alcohol. The liquor. The liquor. I mean, I've, I've only read stories, but uh, you know, I've heard tell. Mythology is is deep and wide running about this 
nectar. And a lot of times that creates when we have a powerful Friday and a powerful karaoke party. We have about nine people here right now. That's right. People who popped in to hit the snooze button. Like they look at their clock and like, Robin Rich or an hour sleep. And back down they go. <laughs> a hearty breakfast or Robin Rich. You know what? I think I will have those eggs. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. we, protein or B level comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. You really think we're up to B level? I hope so. Good for us! Um, <laughs> we've arrived. Oh yeah, we. I remember those Saturday mornings playing what? the I'm, four people. Two weeks ago in Nashville, I mean, we, we destroyed yeah. the Bone Friday. On Saturday, we paid the price, but we're willing to do that because the people, Deserve it. they leave it all in the field on Friday night, right? You know what I mean? And then they got to save up for Saturday night. And they're a little bit, uh, what's the word, hungover, hungover. Oh, no, no, Saturday. <laughs> and now I realize that we are the guy, guys, if we, can, if we can figure out how to market this, I'm telling you, <laughs> are you okay there, right? Nobody will have to work again. We can literally quit our jobs if we can figure out how to market this. Clearly, look at this crowd. The cure for a hangover, the, 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 the obvious cure for a hangover, and I didn't know this, and the medical community doesn't know it, they're about to, Cure for a hangover is obviously uh, Jared and Jensen. <laughs> you bring in Jared and Jensen to one. It doesn't say a lot about our B level comedy, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but whatever, we're the, we're the geniuses figuring this out. If we can bottle Jared and Jensen. And if you wake up in the morning instead of fumbling for your aspirin, if you open the bottle all of a sudden, whoo, Jared and Jensen popped out. <laughs> How are you feeling? You got a headache? By the way, if anybody has a six foot four bottle sitting around their house. <laughs> Honey, where is the, um, oh, here. <laughs> I'm looking through the door. Sweetie, sweetie, oh, here's the bottle. Eric, Eric, Eric. And then the tough part is when you're, you're only kind of hungover, and she's like, oh, I don't need both, just give me one. How do you choose? Do I let Jared out of the pill bottle, or do I let Jensen out of the pill bottle? <laughs> All you need is a big fat dose of J and J and you're ready to go. No more hangover. Oh, you may look like shit, you may feel like hell, but you're gonna see something beautiful while you're dying. <laughs> That's gonna be worth it. I'll hold your hair while you boss. <laughs> what are you doing, throwing up? <laughs> you're gonna throw up? All right, you're gonna need to get your husband here at the top. Pick this up. Jared, hold her hair. I am. <laughs> We're, we're geniuses, we're geniuses. You know what else is geniuses? We don't come to this town by ourselves just yapping on microphones. We do it all while providing for you the sonic soundtrack of your life. The absolute musical mastery that is Loud and Swain over here to my left. Let's say good morning to the boys in the band. On the drums, drinking coffee, codenamed Hillary Stephen Norton. <laughs> On the bass guitar. Rocking a local shirt featuring a local family. It's Michael. Peaky Blinder Bora! <laughs> On the sixth string, a man who does not need glasses to see into your soul and ruin your life. You love him and you hate to love him, but you can't stop yourself because you're only flesh and bone. He, however, is not. He is powered by darkness and all things evil, including unbridled sexuality. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Maria!
no time. No more dilly-dallying. No more threatening your marriage with Billy Moran's guitar licks. Let's get the ball rolling and the show started. Better than a strong cup of coffee. Let's start the day with a full dose of Brianna Buckmaster. gonna okay. not survive insured, another day. Right? Yeah, Hold we're on. good. Uh, Brianna, got it, got it. I, I said, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's nothing that ass can't fix. You know what I'm, saying? I'm sorry. Yeah. It's written on every bathroom wall in Birmingham. <laughs> All right, with that, I'm getting out of here. Okay. Brianna Buckmaster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy your time out there.